What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Treywood Garage video. Now today uh, I want to talk about something that we kind of discussed briefly in my last video. If you haven't seen that one, check it out. And over the last three months of daily driving my C7 Corvette, there's been one thing that's really bothered me that we're going to get fixed today. So you guys will know that I briefly talked about the cylinder deactivation that comes on this uh, C7 Corvette. Now my car is a 2014, it's an earlier car, um, and I know in some of the later cars, it depended on what mode you drove in, it changed it a little bit, but I typically drive the car in touring mode, it's the most comfortable suspension and steering for me, just for driving around every day. And the cylinder deactivation in that mode is very prevalent. So after doing a little bit of reading online on some of the different forums and discussion posts, a lot of people were talking about how bad the cylinder deactivation is for these cars. Which honestly completely makes sense because when your engine is cutting down four cylinders, that constant starting and stopping is going to cause a, a lot of damage. And a lot of you guys in the comments echoed the exact same thing. You said, hey, you know, it's going to screw your engine up. I've had the same problem. You need to go ahead and get that sorted out as quickly as you can. So a lot of you guys mentioned that I should pick one of these and I actually did end up picking one. So this is a range technology AFM disabler. And pretty much what this does is this just plugs into the OBD2 port of the car and it kind of tricks the car, I guess you could say, uh, into keeping the car in the V8 mode all the time. So this should be really simple to install. So before we do that, I want to take the car out and kind of get some clips, try to show you uh, what the car is doing when it's swapping between that V8 and V4 mode uh, and see if you can kind of hear what's happening when it's doing that. All right, so as you can see right now, it's showing that it's actually in V8 mode when we're stopped. So I'm gonna do an acceleration. And there you can see it just swapped down into V4 mode. So the car just got really quiet, kind of had that vacuumy exhaust sound. And then if you give it a little bit of gas, it switches back to V8. So pretty much what's happening is the car is just constantly switching between four cylinder mode and eight cylinder mode. So it's knocking off half of those cylinders and that's what we don't want to happen because over time that's going to cause some really bad wear and tear on the engine. So this is the box that it comes in. I know they do offer it in a blue and a red LED color. Even though the box is blue, I did get the red option because I thought it would fit the uh, interior better. And then here on the back it just kind of shows you uh, some of the instructions it just says you know don't leave it in there it could train the battery if you're not going to be driving the car a lot i do also want to say uh, this video is not sponsored by range i did buy this with my own money so uh, you can expect a a complete and comprehensive honest review because um, i did buy this with my own money so all right so first before we do the install i just kind of want to show you what comes in the case so all it is is this just little thing here and this just plugs into the OBD2 port, and in theory, this should fix our problem. All right, so the installation on this is gonna be really simple. So first thing we're gonna do is just open the car up, and then right down here, you're gonna see you're gonna see that OBD2 port. So all we have to do is just plug this directly in, and it should work. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. You can see there it's lighting up. It's starting to do its thing. And there we go. I guess that means that it's on and working. So the thing that I really like about this device is it really is just plug and play. You just plug it directly in. There's no need to do any tuning, anything like that. And it doesn't mess up the car. It's not like it's permanent. As long as the module is plugged in and working, it's actually gonna cut out the cylinder deactivation. And then if you ever do want to have the cylinder activation working again, all you do is unplug it. And as long as it's unplugged, it's not active. So it's not doing anything permanent to the vehicle. It's just a really easy thing to just do and undo whenever you may need it. And of course my plan is to keep it in there and run it permanently, especially the way I'm driving you know, daily. Uh, it's gonna make it a lot easier on the engine. Now if I do decide to take it on a long trip where the cylinder deactivation might really be better, uh, all I gotta do is unplug it, throw it in the glove box and I'll be good to go. And another big concern that I had about, about doing this on the car was how much is it gonna hurt my gas mileage. Now again, if this is gonna save me thousands of dollars in engine repair, again, gas mileage is not really the most thing I'm worried about. I'd rather have a good running vehicle over having a little bit better gas mileage, but from from what I've read and from what you guys have told me, it actually doesn't affect the gas mileage very much at all. It's very minimal. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and start the car up. All right, I know it's hard to see from here, but you can see the lights on, so that must mean that it's active. So we're going to drive it and see if it's working. All right, so I've been driving the car around for about five, 10 minutes now, and uh, it seems to be working. The car is staying in V8 mode all the time. And honestly, as far as my gas mileage goes, uh, it's actually, Funny enough, it seems like it's getting a little bit higher. Um, once I'm driving, just cruising, doing about 55, 60, once the car gets into about fourth or fifth gear, um, it's getting about the same gas mileage, if not even a little bit better than it was before. So uh, we'll call that a win. 
So it looks like so far the AFM disabler is working. Now, um, again, this video is, is not sponsored by Range or anything. I bought this with my own money. So this is a true and honest you know, review of what I think of the product. So far, I'm impressed. Uh, if it continues to work, then it'll be a success in my book. Uh, and again, it, it's one of those things, it's $230. It is a little bit pricey, but if it can save you thousands of dollars in engine repair and damages over time, then in my opinion, it's a good investment. And again, this is, it's completely reversible. If at any point I wanted to go back and not use it, all I have to do is unplug it and it's going to go right back to factory settings. It doesn't mess up anything permanently. And even if we do have to sacrifice a little bit on the uh, gas mileage, then so be it. It's better to have a good performing car than a car that gets a little bit better gas mileage. And from what I can tell, it's very fractional at most. So I think that's going to do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, again, if, if you have one of these cars and you're ha or any GM or any new modern car that has cylinder deactivation, like I said, I do know that range makes different uh, modules for different cars so that it'll fit. But again, I, I recommend it. It'll save you thousands in engine repair in the future and kind of cut off that uh, cylinder deactivation, which from my experience and what a lot of other people say, it was kind of a, a fluke. It didn't really work from the start. If you like this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see next. It'll help us grow the channel and get us to where we want to go. And again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you on the next one.